Star Rail has released a new endgame mode called Apocalyptic Shadow, and like always, I wanted to see how viable our favorite tier 2 DPS blade can do in this game mode. This game mode is essentially two boss fights, and the faster you clear, the more points you get. There's no turns anymore, it's just raw action value, and the less action value you take, the more points you get. So you can either build a team that focuses around one-shotting the main boss with characters like Zila, but to be honest, I think you need pretty high investment to pull that off. Otherwise, you do what I do, and then you go for a style where you deal with the adds first, and then nuke the boss down when it's alone. I will be upfront and say that Blade didn't clear as fast as my Zela did, but I still think he put up a respectable performance. You need 6600 points to get full stars, and with two sides, ideally each side should be around 3300 points. My Blade team was able to put up 3260 points, so while it's not at the 3300 mark, I think it's alright considering we don't have Jade yet, and I'm predicting with Jade, this game mode would be a lot easier because Kokolia is quantum and wind weak, which would make a Jade Blade team shine. For the second half, I use E0 S0 Himako Super Break. Honestly, Himako is getting huge Ws with Firefly's release because all the endgame is catered around Firefly, and inadvertently Himako gets to pop off as well. This team is super scuffed because my Himako is on a rainbow set, Gallagher and Harmony MC are barely built, they have like no traces leveled up, and they have scuffed relics, and I guess Ron May is the only OP part of my team where she's E1 S1. But at this point in the game, if you still don't have E1 Ron May, are you even trying? I'm just kidding. Ron May has a good E1, but I wouldn't say it's necessary. Okay, so for the first side, I used my blade team, and I chose the buff that buffs your ultimate damage. And it's basically the unlimited blade works team, so you cycle blade over and over again. And Lynx is here as a sustain. And you basically hold Lynx's ultimate for when someone gets stunned. But if you feel like you're too close to dying, then you can just use it right away, because obviously it's better to survive. Otherwise you lose a lot of damage. So here I'm focusing down the Wind Weak Icicle on the very right. So with this basic and the follow-up attack, it should die and then implant Wind Weak onto Kokolia. Then I ult Kokolia to get rid of the left Icicle. At this point, I think um, you want to kill Japard off first before killing Kokolia because she'll take increased damage if she's the only one. But because Blade does splash damage, you can shred Kokolia's bar down while splash damaging Japard until he's low, low enough to just finish off. And I don't think this is heavily optimized. I basically tried a couple of tries with this team. Um, the first go around I used Branya's Light Cone on Sparkle, but then it worked, but I felt like Dance 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 would save more action value because literally in, in its text it says it advances forward everyone. And in this game mode where there are no turn breakpoints. Honestly, Dance 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 becomes one of the best light cones. Not that it wasn't one of the best light cones already, but it becomes even more important because its action value saves you so much. Um, its action advance saves you so much action value. So no one there was stunned, but I used Lynx's ultimate anyways because they were getting low. Okay, breaking Kokolia here would refresh my ultimates. And then I think at this point, I really want to kill Japard off. So I can leave Kokolia alone. And I, I probably was thinking here who I should target with Blade's ultimate. I'm pretty sure it's... Oh, did I just target down the middle? 
Interesting. I mean, that was probably the right, right call. To be honest, I'm not even sure. We just need to make sure he dies before he does his stupid shield again. Okay, yeah. Now he's dead. And I just full target Kokolia and then get her to phase 2. Unlucky she still had 2%. That could have been valuable action value that I lost, but it's okay. Alright, so phase two, she spawns, like she's alone, but she spawns four adds. So you gotta kill those first. So like always, I target the right one with blades, basic attack and follow-up attack. I don't think it kills here, so it would require another attack to kill. Okay, it's dead now, and now Kakoli has implant. So I think from here on out, I just target Kakolia and let splash damage kill the adds. So there's only one icicle left. It might have been the play to actually target the Icicle there instead of Kakolia, just to make sure that it just dies. It's hard to judge damage on the first time you do one of these fights. Like it's still not dead yet. Okay, it's finally gone. Okay, and now it's all about surviving because she does this thing where she blasts down a giant Zhongli ultimate and then she charges it again and just keeps throwing it down until the end of the fight. And also now Branya and Sparkle are out of sync, so this kind of sucked for me. So I feel like if things go right, I could probably get 3300 points. It's just I'm not at the point where I want to keep resetting to, to get that. Okay, and then we should be very close to breaking her. The only problem is because Sparkle and Branya are out of sync, I don't think it'll happen on this turn. But I don't think any of my characters are going to die, so... We can do it on the next cycle. Or not cycle, but the next round. So here I heal Blade, get Lynx's ultimate, and then cleanse everyone. Well, basically just Branya. We finally break her. We all get, and then all the ultimates regen. And then in this, basically we kill her here, but it just is how many ultimates does it take? I wonder how much of a difference having E1 would make here. Sadly, I, I don't have E1, so... I don't know why I didn't Lynx ult, but... Uh, whatever. 
Anyways, that was side one. Cleared pretty comfortably. It's definitely not the fastest clear, but it was very comfy. So, I mean, we take those. The fact that Blade is still kind of relevant, even though he's not really getting the recognition from the other content creators. Okay, we're on to the second side. This side, I think, is a lot easier just because of a super break. I mean the first side is probably really easy too if you have the right team. I, I think the only problem with Argenti is you can take a lot of damage from his swords like right right here. They basically launch a bunch of attacks right away and they can one-shot weak allies. Yeah like Himiko here almost died. Now obviously I could have Gallagher ulted earlier and then proc Himiko's follow-up attack, but I wanted to save it until after I use Harmony main character's ultimate so that I can get the super break. So here, I have super break unlocked, and then that's when I trigger all of these breaks. Yeah, and I, I think this fight is a lot more straightforward because you kind of just break whatever you can break and then focus down Argenti. And keep in mind this is with a super super suboptimal setup because none of my characters except for Ron May have an ideal relic set and the trace levels of Gallagher and Harmony main character are like level 5 or below. And even Himiko doesn't have full traces unlocked. So it kind of shows you the power of Super Break. Like, it literally is the hyper bloom of Honkai Star Rail, where low investment can still get you really high damage. But then there's also its downsides, right? So you have to be able to break the enemy and it just so happens that this is tailor-made for you to break them. Like, they have the right typings for fire characters like Gallagher. And they also have imaginary for Harmony MC. But also if you run into enemies who don't let you, like if they have toughness protection, so I think the deer has it somewhat, Sam has it, that giant automaton dude can also have it, and then if they introduce more enemies that have toughness protection, then you also run into a huge problem where you're basically hitting like a wet noodle now because they don't let you break enemy units and that's why I've never really been a huge fan of break because if you build Zila right she will almost work for you in any situation at least if you have her invested enough I guess not really if there's enemies that like like those Marastruck who revive they don't actually count as being killed. So those enemies, if, if it's just a bunch of those enemies, then Zila can never really get Resurgence off. So like every character has, has their downsides. There's no character I think that is universally gonna always, always be powerful. But I just think Super Break runs into a lot of risk if we go up against. I mean, you could always use it on the other side that doesn't have the toughness protection. So there's that. I don't know, because like I'm creating, well, I have created a second account where I'm testing out a Clara team and then a Firefly Super Break team. And I've already encountered some problems with, like, I was using Firefly Super Break in Simulated Universe and came up against the deer, where they had toughness protection and I couldn't do anything against it. 
And then with Clara, I was doing MOC and came up against those violin drink dudes who like apply the debuffs on you. But because their attacks are just applying debuffs on you, they don't actually count as attacking you. So Clara's follow-up attack never triggers in that fight. So, okay, sorry, I wasn't explaining anything that was going on, but I mean, just I was just breaking the swords, and then when the swords were broken, I deal massive super break damage to Argenti. Yeah, and so that was a really, really easy second half. So you don't need Firefly. Himiko does the job. 